that's good that moves freely now that's what we want so more assembly some of the flash sink components and the shutter release here Give that a little wipe with a bit of molybdenum paste and that hooks in here. That spring hooks against, it, it goes into the inside of that case. You have to watch that it's not sticking out through the top or bent in some strange fashion and pushing against the mechanism plate at the bottom. The moving flash contact. I'll just cock this. This lever goes on here. This lever holds the main drive cam, the main shutter cam. In the cocked position. That's that. Plain screw at this end. At the other end is a spring and a shoulder screw. Now this spring was displaced and I took the shutter apart it's very slightly misshapen but hopefully it won't cause me any problems I'm going to make sure that the spring goes around the shoulder of that screw and doesn't get trapped underneath it that's good and I've got to swing that spring around and hook it in behind that arm That's good. Just checking that arm moves freely, it does. The, the end of that lever there, I'm just rubbing some molybdenum paste over that, and that's so that the when the main cam comes around it latches in position easily. The shutter release can go back in the shutter at this point. And all I'm doing here is just putting a very brief wipe of molybdenum paste on the shaft. Not that uh, I expected that to cause much problem. And I've got to get this underneath the bee lever and get this spring tucked inside the case. So I'm tucking that spring in with the end of a screwdriver. And you can see how it lifts this lever. That looks fine. So the main drive cam can go in there next. It's here. I'll just give that a wipe in through the center. And on that curved surface, that's where it contacts the retard gear train arm. And that needs to have some lubricant on it because otherwise it'll gall and uh, be very rough. And that puts quite a load on the shutter cocking rack if that, in that situation. All right, so we'll take that round to the park position. I've got the main, the main spring here, which I'm fairly sure has been replaced because it looks like a brand new one. Drop that in position so the pin drops into a little hole in the arm on the shuttercock, the main drive cam. And I've got to get the end of this around and hooked behind here. So let's see if I can do that. Yep, 
Yep, you didn't see any of that, but that's all right, neither did I. I knew where it was likely to be. We'll cock this and see if the shutter fires. It does. So that's good. Now I'll cock it again and put the speed trains in place. That spring's trying to jump out there. Right, the retard gear train. This has been cleaned in naphtha. I've cleaned that in an ultrasonic cleaner. Suspended in a jar of naphtha. I've also lubricated that with graphite powder. This arm here must be pulled back so it drops behind a tab on the blade actuating ring, not sitting on top of it. This screw goes through a large hole in the speed retard gear train and that allows us some adjustment for our speeds. I'll do up the pivot screw. I've just set this about halfway across its travel. Let's see what sort of a speed we get. That sounded a bit quick for a second, but I'm willing to be convinced. We'll find out. The self-timer. The screw on the base of the self-timer drops into a little hole in the mechanism plate. If you don't get it seated correctly, it won't work. It'll sit up. It won't, won't work correctly. Let's get this in position. Of course it dropped in straight away there just to make it uh, just to show off. Pulling back this lever makes that off that speed train run down as self timer. That's that's parked. Okay, this is getting fairly complete now. I'm not sure what the speeds will be like yet, we'll have to find that out. The internal rack, this is the piece that uh, cocks the main drive spring. White around the inside of that with some molybdenum and paste, white around the outside edge of that with some molybdenum and paste. This has to hook Over this, uh, the spring has to hook over that post there. Set that in position. You can see it pulling against the arm on the self timer there. The, this is little sector gear here. This is this is what cocks the main cam, the main drive cam and spring. I just put a, a brief wipe of molybdenum paste on there. The little tab on this arm must drop down behind this lever here. And that's engaged correctly. So the, the last tooth on this cam engages with the, the last notch of the ring there. Okay, so at this point, I'm ready to test to see what speeds this thing's going to produce. Here's the speed settings cam plate. I'm going to wipe molybdenum paste around the centre. Around here where the retard gear train arm will run. And around here where the B lever will run. Drop this in place. Rotate it round to the eighth of a second position rid of uh, cotton there I think. Let's get rid of that and see what it does. Well that was much too fast so it means I've got to swing the main drive cam in, the retard gear train in, inwards for greater engagement with the main drive cam to slow this down. So I'll slacken the adjustment screw, move the speed train, tighten the adjustment screw Put everything back and try again. Getting this spring hooked over the post is often the 
the trial get that correctly positioned because it ain't at the moment that's it put this plate back on the top round of the oak to the second position what do we get? that didn't sound too bad maybe a bit fast what's the 15th sound like? Well, I'll have to go and test that because that's not a hundred miles away from where it needs to be. I'll put the front retaining ring in place on the shutters to hold everything together. And while I'm here, I'll check that delay action and see how that works. So we'll cock the shutter. Set it to one second, set the delay action, release it, that's running down nicely. And the shutter runs nicely. I'll go and test my speeds and be back. Well the speeds are good. Very slightly fast on the slower speeds, an eighth and slower. The thirtieth was right on the money. Everything's looking very good. So I'm just going to check that I've got uh, my screws done up tight. That looks good and start closing the shutter up check that's all seated correctly now this little lever here needs to go in this is the one that prevents you from being able to depress the shutter release on the shutter if the shutter's not cocked which shows you wasting film because if you can depress the shutter release you can depress the film release effectively and you end up losing a shot you end up winding past an exposure on the film that's all good put the retaining ring back on the top and I'll put the shutter into the outer case these parts have all been cleaned I'll give the curved pusher A light wipe with molybdenum paste all surfaces likewise the curved rack that's just to make sure it moves freely in the case drop the curved pusher into there put the curved rack in behind it cock the shutter and fit this in place no, nope, something's not sitting correctly now yeah, we're good I'm going to rotate this until my flash contact drops into that slot there it doesn't look like it's keen to do that Yeah, it's just popped in. Three screws. The two small countersunk screws are different diameters. The 
the smaller of them runs into this little tab on the end here. The larger diameter one runs in there. Don't quote me on it, I think they're 1.2 and 1.4 millimetres. Now flash contact there, I just want to tighten that screw on the side of the case. But I've lost my screwdriver. Found it, I just put it back in the wrong stand. Let's do that screw up. And the rings at the front of the shutter. Remove my retaining ring again. This pair. The underside of this, I'm just giving that a light wipe of molybdenum paste. Inside and outside edges. You don't need to do the top. That drops in through that slot. The pin on the bottom here couples to this aperture setting lever here. Drops into a fork in that lever. There are two notches in the shutter speed settings ring here. Connect to the shutter speed setting cam plate here and here. That looks prop looks like it's all properly in place. This piece with our aperture setting numbers. That goes in. There's a little notch in the bottom of it. Couples with a little stand up on that ring there. Get that in place. Then this will move with that. This piece is the lens mount. This is the detent for the shutter speeds. I'm just rubbing some molybdenum and paste along there. Typically that's somewhat smothered in graphite grease. I've cleaned this. And this goes on the shutter. It only goes on in one place. It drops into position over a post on the mechanism plate to stop it rotating. And the numbers, your number plate is over here near the shutter release. Got to get the retaining ring started. And not cross threaded. It feels better. That's it. And normally I just do that up until you get some tightness on the settings wheel. If that feels quite tight, then normally I would just back this off slightly. And normally you're fitting a little screw in here to lock the settings. So in this case I probably would have picked it up on that spot or I would have gone back one further notch, loosened it one further notch and gone to there and check this again. It should be a positive click stop but it shouldn't be over, over stiff. Because we haven't got the screw I'm just going to back that up even slightly more again and I'm going to put three dots of lacquer there to hold that so that that ring does not unscrew. My preferred method obviously would be to use this use the screw but we do not have a screw. This will do. And this will just prevent that retaining ring 
from uh, randomly unscrewing itself. So that's our shutter complete. What it needs now is for the lenses to be cleaned and put back in place. So first I'm going to clean the shutter retaining ring to remove oil and grease and dirt and dust. The shim, I'll do the same with the shim. I just want the oil and stuff off that. It's often quite oily because this is up against the focus helical and the focus helical often sweats out oil from the grease over time which finds its way on here and into the back of the shutter and before you know it onto the shutter blades. The outside of the lens not the glass just the body of the lens I'm wiping around that to remove any traces of grease. Likewise the rear lens group and I'm trying to stay away from the glass itself. See it's just removed some oil and rubbish there. Now I want to clean the glass. I'm just using glass cleaner, nothing magic. I'll start with the innermost surface here from the rear group. There's a few marks on the coating, they may or may not go away. It's got little, little dots. Coating marks can look, uh, look worrying but generally speaking they don't have much effect on images. And the outside surface, always rotate your cotton bud while you're doing this so that you keep presenting a fresh surface to the lens so that if you do pick up a fragment of grit you're not grinding it into the glass. Now I can see some blemish on that lens and I'm probably going to have to have better light to tell what that is. Sometimes you end up with something stuck on the lens and you can tell that if you feel it with the end of a toothpick you can feel a roughness sometimes. There's nothing there. There's a couple of spots on that lens coating. I'll have to have a I'm trying to work out which surface that's on, whether it's on the outside surface or the inside surface of this rear group. It's on the outside surface. Those marks didn't clean off, therefore they're not going to clean off. I'll blow the dust out of that and screw the rear group in place. Lenses do accumulate blemishes over time. That's just unfortunate. That's, that's what old age is like. In the front group, basically the same. I'm going to clean the inside surface first. I'm angling this to the light so I can see if there are any smears on the glass and, and so deal to them. That looks good. And I'll put the lens in place in the shutter. Make sure you line up the red dots and that clicks into place. If you don't line up the red dots it won't go on but it'll get half on and it'll do terrible things. So the front surface Again, I'm angling this to the light so I can see if there are any any 
problems, any smears or anything, that all looks good. I'd be less concerned about the outside surface than the other surfaces because it's going to have someone's fingerprints on it fairly promptly anyway. Right, so I'll put the shim on there. Bring back the camera body. I'll just move this curved rack around slightly. Put the shutter into the camera body. Try cocking it. Didn't quite cock the shutters, the timing's not quite right. So I'll rack the lens forward, and this curved rack, I'm going to lift the shutter forward, shift that lens, that rack, one tooth to my left, re engage it, drop the lens back in place, and try cocking the shutter again. Not enough. I'll do it again. If it was too far advanced, the film advance lever wouldn't want to complete and you wouldn't want to force it. I heard that shutter click then. There's the film advance and the shutter cocks. So that's good. The shutter cocks just before the point where the film advance stroke completes. I'll put the retaining ring in the back and do that up, assuming I can find the tool. And I'll just nip that up tight. And check the action. Now I'm checking the action of the shutter release and I can tell it's releasing the film release, the film advance, before we get to the point where the shutter fires. You hear the click. That's the film advance freed up and then the shutter goes. So it means that that screw on the top of that film release shaft is too high. So I need to screw it in slightly. So I'll take the top cover off. That top cover's got a bit of spring to it, so it tells me that something's slightly, slightly bent. Lift that meter out of the way for the moment. Here's our adjustment here. Now I think that's going to need a good, at least half a turn, probably more. So I cock the shutter. Release it. Keep pressing very slowly on the shutter release. That's the film releasing there, and then the shutter releases afterwards. Ideally, they should happen at the same time. Let's try half this. Just ran out of card space there. Let's try this. Okay, so that time it released the shutter prior to the film advance film advance being released so I'm going to take that back a quarter of a turn try again that was the film release the shutter went straight afterwards that's the best pick film's not that expensive um, that, that'll be fine as that is okay so that all looks good and while I've got the top off, I'm going to have a look at the state of that uh, cocking rack and see if there's any obvious problem with the way it moves. Because, of course, we know the teeth aren't perfect. I think that's good. 
So we'll get our meter back in place. One last look at the glass to make sure there's no fingerprints on anything. A quick blow to make sure there's no dust in anywhere. Fit the top cover in place. Put the screws back in the top cover. That bracket at the end there, that's certainly out of line for some reason. Let's just see if we can move that. That fits a bit neater. The strap lug was not quite around as to where it should have been. And these two screws were the screw holes were not as easy to access. That fits well. Just get this one at the end of the top housing. Check the camera again. That's working nicely. Where is the rewind knob? Well, we have this goes on the top there, and then the rewind knob. What about the meter dials? Let's get that clean and reassembled. So, start with the cleaning. Some of these parts have been through the ultrasonic cleaner, so they're clean, but anything that had paint on it, like this, of course, has not been through the ultrasonic cleaner. It's going to be cleaned by hand. So I'm just using some naphtha. This is quite clean as these things go. Often they are very greasy. But we do know that the camera has been apart before, so whoever had it apart probably cleaned all these pieces. I would say at a guess that they weren't over generous with their lubrication. But at least they left the parts clean. So starting here, this sits, there's two protrusions on here, two holes in this disc. Make sure both protrusions are engaged with the disc fully rotated. It should have the number 16 should point roughly forward. You know you've got everything correctly positioned. The spring there's a large wavy washer here that goes under the ASA scale. I'm just giving that a wipe with some synthetic grease. Drops that in there. The ASA scale was film speed scale. Pop that in there. This one where we put an air input. There's another wavy washer that goes on the top. Sometimes there's a fixed flat washer that sits underneath here. It's not in this case. This wavy washer goes in there. And there's a chrome screw on the top that holds it all together. And if you're very lucky, no one's made a mess of that screw. This one's in uh, quite good order. We do that up most of the way. Now I've got that sitting exactly where it was when the camera came in. With that mark at the end of the scale there on the ASA scale pointing to 18. 
Normally it should be sitting somewhere between 17 and 16. So I'm going to check the meter now on a calibrated light source and see how accurate it is. I'm checking for two things. One, that it responds evenly to light. So as you go up and down the brightness scale, the meter responds appropriately, which will tell me that the selenium cell is good. If it doesn't, if it apparently reads high in low light, low light levels compared to uh, you'd expect it to, then that means the selenium cell is failing. However, I shall find out and report back. Well, unfortunately, the selenium cell is failing. It uh, reads low at higher light levels than it should do. So um, you would overexpose. So that's a shame, but it's not, unco not uncommon, of course. I mean, selenium cells, they don't usually last as long as us. So the camera is a nice camera. It needs to be used with a handheld meter, a, uh, the Sunny 16 rule, exposure tables, I suppose. Films used to have them on the inside of the, on the packet. Or you can use a light meter app on your cell phone, and that'll get you by too. They're quite good. So there it is, nice Retina 3C. The exposure meter certainly works, but it's not to be relied on. Everything else moves nicely, shutter releases properly, cocks, we didn't need to replace the shutter cocking rack. All good. This one can go back to its owner. Thanks for watching.